Hey guys, welcome back to Office 365 Concepts. In this particular video, we are going to explore Microsoft Teams Admin Center. So let's get started. There are six roles to manage Microsoft Teams Admin Center. We have discussed these roles in the previous video in detail where we talked about Microsoft Teams architecture. The admin role that has highest privileges is global administrator. A global admin can do everything within a tenant. But apart from a global admin, there are six roles that you can assign to the accounts and they can perform different type of tasks within Teams Admin Center. These roles are Teams Administrator, Teams Communication Administrator, Teams Communication Support Engineer, Teams Communication Support Specialist, Teams Device Administrator, and Teams Telephony Administrator. To open Teams Admin Center, you will go to portal.office.com. You will log in with a global administrator or a Teams Administrator account. Then click Admin Tile. And on Microsoft 365 Admin Center, under Admin Centers, click Teams. And you will be redirected to Microsoft Teams Admin Center. Or you can directly type admin.teams.microsoft.com in a browser and log in with the admin credentials. So let's talk about Teams Admin Center and let's explore all these options one by one. The first section in Teams Admin Center is Teams. Under this section, the first option is Manage Teams. Under Manage Teams, an administrator can see the list of the teams created by him or by the users. If a user has created a team from the Teams application, the administrator can see these teams as well. Along with the team name, the administrator can see the number of the channels. You can see the standard channel, private channel, or a shared channel, whatever channels are created within a team. You can see the number of those channels. Along with that, the administrator can see the privacy of the team. Along with this, the administrator can see the status of each team, whether the team is going to expire, team is active, or it is archived. If an administrator wants to create a new team, he can create a new team from here. We are going to explore all these options in the upcoming videos. Next is team settings. Under this section, an administrator can control settings of tagging, email integration, file storage, and devices. Next is Teams policies. Teams policies are used to control what settings or features are available to the users when they are using Teams and channels. By default, you will see a global policy that is automatically applied to all the users in your organization. But you can create a custom policy and you can assign to the users. Next is Teams templates. In the first video of this series, we discussed how to create a team in Teams application using templates. An administrator also has pre-built templates that he can use to create teams. Under this section, you will find all the pre-built templates that can be used to deploy a team as administrator. Next is template policies. Under this section, an administrator can control which Teams templates the users can see while creating Teams. If you click Global Policy, you will see all the templates here. As an administrator, if you want to hide a template for the users, select the template and click Hide. That template will be hidden for the users in Teams application and the hidden template will show under Hidden Templates. Next is Teams Update Policies. Update policies are used to manage updates or the pre-release features within the Teams applications. Next is Teams Upgrade Settings. From here, you can manage the coexistence settings for your Teams organization. If you are not aware of these terms that we just discussed or we are going to discuss in this video, do not worry. We will be talking about all these options in the upcoming videos. The next section is Users. Under Manage Users, you can control the settings of a user account. If you click on a user, you can see the applications assigned to the user under Applications tab. Under Teams tab, you can see in what teams this particular user is added. You can manage voicemail settings, meetings and calls. You can manage the Teams devices for this particular user and you can manage the policies and monitor usage from here. Under guest access, you can manage the settings for the guest accounts, like whether they are allowed to make private calls, they are allowed to share their screen in a meeting, and so on. And under external access, you can control how users can communicate with other users who are using non-Teams applications. For example, Skype for Business. Next is Teams devices. 
Under this section, you can manage the Teams rooms and the Teams devices that you use during a Teams meeting. Microsoft Teams rooms provide a complete meeting experience that brings HD video, audio and content sharing to the meetings. Under this section, you can perform tasks like apply team specific settings, check the health status of Microsoft Teams rooms. You can view and manage the device inventory. You can update, restart and monitor diagnostics for devices and you can create and assign configuration profiles to a device or groups of devices. The next section is Teams apps. Under this section, you can manage the application and the permissions for these applications. For example, under Manage apps, you can allow or block the applications within Teams application. Under Permission policies, you can control which applications are available to the users in your organization within Teams application. These setup policies are used to install and pin applications. You can also control which users can upload custom applications in a team. You can use permission policies and setup policies to configure what applications are available for the specific users in your organization's app store. And under customize store, you can customize the team's app store with your organization's logo, custom background or color. Next is meetings. Under this section, you can manage meeting policies. You can manage audio conferencing policies, live event policies, meeting templates and so on. Next is messaging. Messaging policies are used to control which chat and channel features are available to the users in a team. You can control the messaging features for all the users of a team, including owners and the members. The next section is voice. From here, you can manage team's voice services. For example, under phone numbers, you can get new numbers or port existing numbers from a service provider. You can assign, unassign and release phone numbers for the users or for services like audio conferencing, auto attendance or call queues. You can manage operator connect. You can manage direct routing, calling policies, call hold policies, park policies, caller ID policies and so on. The next section is locations. Under this section, you can assign emergency address or the calling plan users and you can define network regions and network sites. Next is frontline deployment. Under this section, you can manage frontline teams. Frontline teams are a collection of people, content and tools within an organization. Those are designed for different frontline worker locations. Frontline workers are the employees whose primary function is to work directly with the customers or providing services, selling products, or the employees, those are directly involved in the manufacturing and distribution of the products and services. Next is enhanced encryption policies. These policies are used to control if the users in your organization can use the encryption settings within Teams. For example, end-to-end -end call encryption and end-to-end -end meeting encryption. Next is policy packages. A policy package is used to control the Teams features that you want to allow or restrict for the set of people or a group of people within your organization. Next is planning. Under this section, we have Teams Advisor. Teams Advisor assesses your Microsoft 365 organization environment and identifies the most common configurations that you may need to update or modify before you can successfully roll out Teams. Also, you can use Network Planner to determine and organize network requirements for connecting people that use Teams across your organization. Next is Analytics and Reports. Under this section, we have usage reports from where we can run different type of reports to understand how users in our organization are using Teams. For example, you can see how many users communicate through channel chat messages and the kind of devices they use to connect to Teams. Then we have reporting labels. Those are used to indicate the physical locations of offices, buildings or organizational sites within your organization. And then we have call quality dashboard. Call quality dashboard is designed to monitor calls and the meeting quality. Call quality dashboard is a separate dashboard that is designed to monitor calls and the meeting quality. And the last section is notifications and alerts monitoring. Under this section, you can create rules to automatically monitor team services. And if something unexpected happens, you will receive alert. So that is all for now. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and if you have questions or suggestions, 
feel free to write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.